Hello and welcome to this, which is the full review of the latest version of Ubuntu Studio, which is 20.04 LTS, Focal Fossa. Focal Fusa? Focal Fossa. I don't know, there's always a bit of a weird thing of the Ubuntu code names. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So first things first. Sorry there's not really been any videos, actually, uh, of, of notes on my channel recently. It's been a very, very busy past couple of months. So I've hardly had time really to do any videos, and I had to just stop them completely at one point. And this video is actually supposed to have come out, I think, last month. So what I'll normally do is I'll do a video when a new version of Ubuntu Studio comes out, and then I'll do one sort of halfway through its lifespan. This is about a month overdue of that, being more of a review as I've sat in it for a little while longer, you know, gotten used to the using the distribution. So I can give it more of a, you know, a proper review rather than they just, this is what comes with it. I can now talk a bit more about what it's like actually using it long term, especially as this is indeed a LTS, which is a long term support release. So what have I thought about it? Well, there's been a couple of ups and a couple of downs, but for the most part, I'd say it's been a very, very positive experience. In fact, I'm going to start off with a big sort of commendation to Ubuntu Studio and to their team here. So before this, and for the last sort of two to three years or so, I've been dual booting on my computer using separate SSDs for both Windows 10 as well as using various different versions of mostly Ubuntu. But I was always using Windows more. I say on a good day it would be about 60-40, 60% Windows, 40% Ubuntu Studio. Occasionally it would drop even lower, say, you know, 70-30, something like that. But with this particular release, I've enjoyed using it so much that I decided to buy myself an NVMe SSD and I actually had to get a, a PCI Express sort of converter card for it as my motherboard didn't actually support it out of the box. There'll be another video on that soon. I've already filmed all that. This is now my main operating system. So well done, Ubuntu Studio team. You've pulled someone over more from the Windows side. Now I am still dual booting as I do like to use tools from both. And you know, depending on the piece of software, depending on what I'm doing, I might prefer to use one over the other. But now the 60% uh, has gone from Windows to Ubuntu Studio now, and, Ubuntu, and Windows is now on the 40%. So hold on there, guys. I think uh, that alone, you could almost sort of close your review there and then. And I think that'll show you how, uh, how, how much I've enjoyed using this particular version of Ubuntu Studio. So seeing as we've had a very sort of, you know, gushingly positive introduction, let's bring it back a bit. And let's cover the negatives I found of this particular release of Ubuntu Studio before I go back into the positives to finish it back off. Firstly, are a couple of problems which crept up near the start of its life, which have gone away. Things, for example, like Firefox having this weird glitch where for some reason I couldn't right click, like at all. And I was using the same version of Firefox and Windows, same computer, same exact computer, same mouse, everything. No problem there. So it's definitely something on Ubuntu or Ubuntu Studio's parts there, unfortunately. There are a couple of problems which have kind of persisted. Now, I've complained before about the actual uh, sound card problems I've had over on Windows to do with audio interfaces, but I've got to say it's not been overly peachy here as well. It's been better, as in, you know, the sound doesn't completely break and I don't have to log in or log back in or close certain programs to make the sound work. There's no annoying popping and cracking to be heard in the sound, but especially when I'm doing things with OBS, for example, and I think this might just be either a Pulse Audio or an ALSA problem. But occasionally it decides to pitch shift my voice a lot lower. I'm really hoping this particular recording, uh, it doesn't have it, as I normally have to do a couple of test recordings first to double check it. It doesn't seem to work so much with Jack, luckily, uh, so I guess I should probably learn how to use Jack a bit more. But, you know, it does tend to pitch shift my voice a bit. It can be quite annoying there. And then, really, all the other big problems have all revolved around the GNOME Software Center. We'll start off with a bit of a positive for it, actually, is the fact that I know that I've, I've heard rumours anyway, I haven't actually tested out any other version of Ubuntu from this particular release. I've heard rumours that I think in the mainline version, you know, the sort of like straight from canonical GNOME version of Ubuntu, the software centre, I think it wasn't giving the option of dev packages at all, just snap packages. And I can say that that is not the case with Ubuntu Studio. It does show you both. However, the GNOME Software Center has had quite a few other issues, unfortunately. So a problem it's actually had from the start is, for some reason, it can't work out about half of my installed programs. So if I bring it up here to show you, this is the GNOME Software Center, and these are the installed programs. And if I just use Audacity as an example here, as you can see, there's all the A's, it's not there. And neither is Ardor. Neither are quite a few programs. If I quickly just go on to, you know, all programs, you can see that I do indeed have Audacity. It is there. When I bring it out, not there at all. Very, very irritating. I actually decided to install the KDE App Center, which I think is Discovery. That could see the programs, and so could the Synaptic Package, package Manager. But GNOME Software Center, for whatever reason, the one that comes prepackaged with it, not really working. So uh, that's sort of another reason why I'm not really surprised that the Ubuntu Studio team are considering switching over their main run to be KDE. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Another problem I had with it about a month and a half ago is that, yeah, it just completely broke. 
and I had to, you know, I had to purge it, you know, completely remove all the parts of it from my system, and then completely reinstall the GNOME Software Center. Absolutely no idea why I did that. Just broke on me. Uh, normally, you know, Ubuntu systems tend to be very stable, and Ubuntu Studio systems tend to be no different, being very stable, and core things like the application center don't tend to break, but in this case it did for some reason. Very, very odd. I'm, I'm finding more and more issues with certain things that are related to uh, GNOME here. So I'm not thinking it's necessarily the Ubuntu Studio team's fault, I think it's more of a fault on the GNOME team. But those are about all the negatives. If we bring in the positives, uh, I think I mentioned before that on OBS here, I think before it was using a really, really old version of it, and uh, I know I'd complained in previous videos about it, and uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was updated, so we have a more up-to-date version of it there. And that's actually something I find really, really good about the Ubuntu Studio team in particular, so quick round of applause to the people who work on Ubuntu Studio there, because it's not just things like OBS. Normally, things I bring up in my videos, it's not just me bringing it up in my videos, it's other people's other videos, but as well as that, it's people who post on things like their Facebook page. If they bring up an issue they've had, if they bring up a suggestion, you almost always get a response directly from one of the developers, and nine times out of ten, if it's a reasonable request, they'll try and implement it. Yeah, it's, it's almost like, you know, I'm, I don't want to call them tech support, because they're not tech support, they're the developers. But sometimes you feel like with operating systems, if I, t if I take something like Windows, for example, you can submit an error report, and it's, it's almost like it drifts off into the ether. And you never really know if it's going to be sold, if anyone's even going to look at it, if it's just going to be, you know, reported as fixed, even though it's not. But with specifically Ubuntu Studio, you can basically just talk directly to them and they get things done. It just shows them off to be a brilliant team, I think. And yeah, props to them. Like I said, round of applause for Ubuntu Studio team. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. And actually, something that I think is very interesting that they do is uh, this backports thing. So I know there's a lot of um, things, especially within things like Linux, where backports are available. So if you don't want to be using, you know, a development branch, but you want to have the latest software and you're willing to sort of take that risk, you can add this PPA in and get a load of the software that's being updated in the sort of more development branches of, you know, the next release of Ubuntu Studio and bring it back over, and that's really, really useful. I haven't personally been using the sort of standard backports repository. What I have been using is the one to get Ardor 6.0, which is actually now on uh, 6.2, I believe. For a few years now, uh, Ardor 5.12 has been the latest version. And then suddenly, very, very shortly after Ubuntu Studio 20.04 LTS came out, Ardor came out of a new version. But then suddenly they come up with this article saying, oh, it's just going to be used in the next version. You don't have to wait until then. Then you scroll down a bit and they say, or you could add in this backport. So I had this backports uh, repository in and it serves you really well. If you, if you want to have the stability in the system, of an LTS, a long-term support release version of Ubuntu Studio, but you'd like to have the latest version of just specifically the most major free and open source digital audio workstation, Ardor, you can get it directly through here. And guess what? This won't just work for Ubuntu Studio. If you're using any other sort of Ubuntu-related distribution, you should be able to add this in as well. And that seems to be something that Ubuntu Studio have been doing fantastically with, specifically with the free and open source community, and that's quite exciting, I think. They're still pushing towards having uh, Plasma 5 to be the next uh, desktop environment, and a good desktop environment too, I might add. A good choice there indeed. But if, like me, your heart is in XFCE, then that's going to be there, you know, for the next load of years with the LTS release. I think the KDE is a good choice. A lot of people really, really like it. It's a teensy bit more customizable than XFCE, and to be honest, they're quite similar. Uh, for my own money, I would actually say that I think that the two best desktop environments you can get are XFCE and KDE. And even though I do like certain things like GNOME, there's just the sheer amount of customizability you get with XFCE and KDE. And a lot of people, you know, compare KDE and GNOME as they're the two biggest. But I feel that the true GTK equivalent to KDE, rather than being GNOME, is actually XFCE. Super customizable. But hey, I don't even have to worry about this uh, if I don't necessarily want to use uh, KDE. Oh, by the way, for the next review, I'm going to be reviewing the KDE version as it is going to be the mainline version. But I imagine I'll be using the XFCE version myself. And how did you do that, you might wonder? The Ubuntu Studio installer. So with this you can install, you know, a different version of Ubuntu and then just convert it into a version of Ubuntu Studio. So for example, if you've wanted to use KDE for the last load of versions of Ubuntu Studio, as I know some of the developers have, hence why they're moving it over to KDE, you are either in the position where you'd have to install the original XFC version of Ubuntu Studio and then install KDE over the top of it, but then that can be a bit of a headache having multiple desktop environments because there's so many dependencies and packages. Or, as they've been doing for the last load of years, you install, say you wanted to use KDE, you would have installed Kubuntu and then you convert it across. But seeing it as they are now converting Ubuntu Studio itself to being KDE, it seems obviously that more people want to do that. And if more people want to use it, it makes sense to go with that. But for someone like me who wants to use XFCE still, I would then install Zubuntu or Xubuntu and then use this to convert it over to being Ubuntu Studio with XFCE. 
And everything else in here has been really, really great as well. It's a even more upstate version of uh, XFC than it was before. It was still XFC, I think, 4.14, but now they've added in a couple of other things here or there. For example, if I go on this bit here, I think I mentioned this in my, in my last video, that um, you get like a grid thing, which is one thing I was really missing from GNOME, because I'm a bit extra of stuff like this, I like to have the menu up there and then more traditional style menu down here. And I've just been able to, you know, customize it and make it exactly how I'd like it to be. And yeah, I've enjoyed it so much, like I said, that this has now become my primary operating system. Oh, and uh, future Adam here, this is something I just remembered as I was editing the video. It's actually something to do with Cajun Live itself, which is one of the video editing pieces of software they offer with Ubuntu Studio, and it's the one I personally use to edit all of my videos. I remember complaining in previous videos, this wasn't really an Ubuntu Studio fault, it was the fault of Cajun Live itself, that I was getting this problem where I was getting these sort of visual glitches and just horrible annoying stuff when I was rendering down the videos in Cajun Live, and there was a slightly newer version, I think it was like 19. Point 10.4 or something, which is the latest version of Cajun Live to come with Ubuntu Studio sort of 20.04. However, you can actually add the Cajun Live stable repository to Ubuntu Studio or to any Ubuntu actually. And so now I am on 20.04.1 of Cajun Live in my 20.04 Ubuntu Studio release. Yeah, I know it can get a few confusing, right? And this for me has solved all the problems. So uh, yeah, all the big, big problems I was having previously are now gone with this. If you want a bit more information on actually, you know, what's included in these particular installs, and the fact that it is indeed designed for and by musicians, graphic designers, authors, publishers, photographers, video makers, as well as just general computer use. I think you, you can see I've got Steam on there. I had some games when you were scrolling through there. Super, super, super useful operating system. So if you want to know a bit more about what comes in a standard install, then please look at my uh, first look. But this is my sort of halfway through its life review. What's that actually like running this operating system? And uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. My hat goes off to you once again, developers. You've done a fantastic job. And like I said, you've, you've pulled me over from using Windows as my primary operating system, to now using Ubuntu Studio as my primary operating system. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And hopefully I'll be back in the swing of things, making some more videos very, very soon. Goodbye.